left off with a top level parser that can grab out all the chunks in a wave file. Now I want to get on to grabbing the actual sample data from the file. So from what I recall, I need to go look at two special subchunks, the FMT space subchunk and the data subchunk, and those will contain what I need to actually extract the samples that form the actual sound data in the file. So I'm going to go and try to dump out everything I can about those two things. But first, I'm going to need to refresh my memory and look at the reference file or reference information again. With that, I'm now getting the format data and the sample data, so I can start getting an idea of what I actually have in this file. The next thing I need to do is make sure I'm not fooling myself. What I mean by that is I want to make sure I actually understand what these samples are right now. They're just sort of a list of numbers to me. You know, I have some format data specifying how I'm supposed to interpret it, and I think I know how to interpret it, but I want to test my understanding by actually using it a little bit and seeing if I can get some results intentionally. You know, if I can set a plan and actually get what I want back, then I've done a good job of learning what this data means and how to work with it. So what I'm going to do to achieve that is I'm going to re-render out a WAV file now using everything I know about the format and using the data that I'm pulling out from this one. And as I'm doing that, I'll start by just copying out the original file into a new one. Then I'll try and modify it in a couple of ways that I can recognize. So I'll try truncating it to one second long, and if I can get it to be a second long in the actual output file when I use other tools to observe it, then I'll know that I've interpreted correctly how to set the length of the file. And then I'll also try to make a version that has silence on the right ch channel, let's say, so that you can only hear sounds from the left side when you're listening to it. And that'll give me another way to test that I understand what's going on with the format. So. I'm going to go and work on doing a little bit of that stuff.
Okay, so I got that first sanity check working. So now I can import a sound, unload it, swizzle its data around and put it back together into a file using my own data serialization and we get a WAV file that can actually be played. I took this time to do these, these things I called swizzle. It's probably a bad name, but it's what they're called for now. But there's just this thing that does undoes the interleaving of the samples in the WAV file uh, and then redoes them on the way out to the the re-rendered version of the same file. The reason I bothered to do all of that is I think it's going to be useful for some of the other uh, sanity tests I want to do. And it also forces me to be a little bit more honest. It's harder to just wholesale copy paste a part of the file when you're forcing yourself to put it through a few transformations and then reassemble it correctly. So I know now that my code that does the assembling is doing it itself. It's not relying on the fact that the data was already formatted correctly and just copying a block that's larger than it should be allowed to copy or something. Along the way, I've started to make a pretty big mess here. Since this is learning mode, I'm not trying to avoid that. I'm trying to keep my mind focused on the task of just making sure I get the format. And so things that are making the code worse are allowable because making the code better right now is a second concern. My first concern is the learning. But I do want to kind of keep a list, uh, get a list started of all these, these places where I know that I've made a bit of a mess so that I will be able to track them down and, and fix them up because I don't want my code to be a mess. I just, I'm allowing it to be a mess for now. So we're going to start this list. And I'll be returning to that either during this arc or shortly after to make sure that the code doesn't get too out of hand as we're building out new stuff. All right, I'm going to get on to the next sanity test. Okay, so now I can truncate a sound and I can control which channel I'm sending data to. So I can mark off those other two sanity checks and the good news is that wasn't very much more work on top of what I already had. The, the setup that I went with for the original sanity check worked out really well for the next two. So. That's a good hint to me that I've got a pretty good handle now on what's happening inside the format, and so that's a good stop stopping spot for today.